Welcome back to Dark Corner's Physical Media Reviews. Hello. We're looking at Via Vision's Blu-ray and 4K release of American Psycho and its heavily caveated sequel. Based on Brett Easton Ellis's controversial novel, considered unfilmable by the author himself, American Psycho had a convoluted journey to the screen. The controversy covered in the documentary Book to Screen included in this release. At the time, Christian Bale was still best known for his childhood performance in Steven Spielberg's Empire of the Sun. The role of Patrick Bateman reinvented him as an actor willing to take on anything. Then I apply an herb mint facial mask, which I leave on for 10 minutes while I prepare the rest of my routine. Reportedly staying in character through production, although I'd add up to a point given the nature of the character. Hey, Paul! Despite toning down the more graphic material, director Mary Harron and screenwriter Guinevere Turner, who also appears, I'm in no mood for a lewd conversation. Stay faithful to the source, creating a satire of 80s corporate excess. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. Look at this. Sometimes silly, but viewed through a man who is its glossy ideal, taken to vile extremes. Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. In a way, this isn't about the character, certainly not about why he does what he does. It's more about the world that created him. Do you like Phil Collins? And one of the most interesting points of satire is that Bateman is acting in plain sight and no one notices. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Or sees that there is obviously something wrong with this man. I don't think I can control myself. Because they're not much better. There are no girls with good personalities. Those who know the film know that there may be other reasons, but however you view it, and it is certainly open to interpretation, it is so much more than the sum of its nudity and violence, which never seems gratuitous, always taking place within the twisted plastic prism of Patrick's world. Don't touch the watch. Resolutely not for everyone, but it's a very well made, very acutely observed, and surprisingly funny view. Can you keep it down? I'm trying to do drugs. Of a culture, of a time, and of a person. I think my mask of sanity is about to slip. Two years later, comedy slasher film The Girl Who Wouldn't Die, starring Mila Kunis and William Shatner. Funny how life works, isn't it? was subtly retooled into sequel American Psycho 2 All American Girl. Mine brought me along on a date with the serial killer, Patrick Bateman. And I can't really explain how wrong this is without ruining the first film, but just no. These are not similar films. It's so exciting. This was a stunningly bad idea. Sweet Jesus, it smells like somebody died in here. Leaving aside that this wins the Dark Corner's The Birds 2 Land's End Award for pointless sequels, is it a decent film in itself? <laughs> Not really, but it could have been. The tongue-in-cheek plot of a college student killing her way to the top I will be Professor Stark, who is new teaching assistant has the potential to be legally blonde meets kind hearts and coronets. Copyright Dark Corners 2024, because that's a great idea. But this lacks subtlety. God, I think I need some professional help. And even a veneer of plausibility. In the first film, the fact that no one seems to notice is part of the point. In this, it's absolutely bizarre. <laughs> It is a shame that someone gave it this title because it prejudices every reviewer and everyone who watches the film cold, but it's more of a shame they couldn't harness a decent premise into what should have been an entertaining movie. On the other hand, watch this scene with your eyes closed and it's like Meg from Family Guy is seducing Captain Kirk. What are you doing? Shh. Just relax, Bobby. Weirdly, why the film got this title is not covered in the commentaries from Kunis and director Morgan J. Freeman. Never has a middle initial been more important. There's some insight into the challenges of making a low-budget movie in 20 days, but generally this is pretty perfunctory, and the only thing tying it to the first film is that, apparently regardless of budget, fake wine tastes awful. 
movie. You know what? The thing that people have to drink as wine, whatever. What was that thing? Fake movie wine. Fake movie wine is really nasty after about six so, you know, takes. It's great that we really it. nasty. You will notice that I have to chug that glass of wine at some point in the scene. Try chugging five, six, seven glasses of those in a row. Ugh. <laughs> Really gross. That's according to Guinevere Turner's commentary. Harren herself contributes two commentary tracks, a really excellent one from 2005 and a somewhat repetitive and less engaged one from 2018. Both cover how hard it was to make a film about consumerism when so few brands wanted their products associated with this controversial material. Rolex, the most famous refusal. Don't touch the watch. Both films also offer some deleted scenes and the set comes in this stylish case. Ideal for those who want to risk covering their entire movie collection in fake blood. Thanks for watching. It's possible to make a sequel very different to the original. Cat People is the obvious example, but what others, good or bad, are out there? Let us know in the comments below, along with your thoughts on these films.